So I just bought the most reviewed knife sharpener on Amazon. At least it was the most reviewed one that I could find. I'm not guaranteeing that it is the most reviewed one, but it was the most reviewed one recommended to me. Let's see if it works. Yeah, I've got no idea how to dramatize a $6 knife sharpener. So the first thing I noticed is that you didn't need a sharp knife to get it out of the packaging, which is probably a good thing if you're buying a knife sharpener. And we should probably read the instructions. Insert blade into the sharpening slot. Pull blade through slot. Repeat until sharp. It hasn't removed any material. That's it. Before we get this test started, let's uh, go over a couple things. I've got several knives to test this on, uh, but we really need to define what we're looking for. What is sharp? Well, in this case, we're gonna go with the shaving test because everybody knows what the shaving test is. If it'll shave, it's relatively sharp. If it doesn't, then it's not sharp. So that's what we're looking for in this video. I know it's super scientific, but the shaving test never really fails. It's kind of like using your fingers to count. I mean, you always have them with you, right? So we have three different knives. We're gonna be testing this one. First off, we have your everyday, ordinary kitchen knife that most of you probably have kicking around in your drawer. This is gonna be the one we start with. The reason being is because I think that this and this are a perfect combination. We say we were good together. I think most people will buy this for this. Now, if this sharpens this, then we'll move on to something much more difficult, which is Spyderco Manix 2, I believe. This is S110V stainless steel. It's one of the harder steels to sharpen. So this will probably be a challenge for this. And then lastly, we have a, this was a test knife that I was kind of messing around with. I believe, if I remember correctly, it's 1084 high carbon steel and uh, there's no bevel on it whatsoever. So this is going to be a complete reprofile and sharpen. We'll see if we can do that on the most popular knife sharpener in the entire world. So the first thing we need to do is make sure each one of these is sufficiently Start with knife number one. So it looks like we have a coarse side and a fine. So since these are extraordinarily dull, we'll go ahead and start on the coarse. Oh boy. Can you see the metal pieces coming off of there? <gasps> okay, so um, that's the core side. I, I think I've got it about as much as I can on the course because uh, it actually feels sharp, believe it or not. Let's see if it'll shave right off of the course. Eh, yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like ripping the hairs out. I guess that's what you would call it. It's not a smooth shave whatsoever. So let's go ahead and go to the fine side because I think we've done about as much as we can do on that course. I left a really, really rough edge. Eh, about 10 passes or so. It is technically shaving. It's not a uh, very comfortable shave, we'll put it that way. <laughs> Do a couple more passes on the fine here.
very very interesting it is not a very clean shave very smooth shave that is for sure but it is technically sharp I would say we were good together I would say we had fun but our trails will never run for All right, so here's S110V. This is some of the harder steel to sharpen out there. That's uh, for sure, that's due to the high carbide content. I'm not sure if that's gonna matter. It is absolutely positively dull. So without wasting any time, uh, this, this pains me to do. <laughs> this knife feels a lot different running it through here than this knife did, that's for sure. And it's not pulling metal off like the other one did. I mean, it might be pulling a little bit off, but it's definitely not pulling metal off the same way as it did on the cheap kitchen knife. Is it even doing anything? Um, so far it hasn't removed any material. It's still just as dull as when I started. Right, so it looks like it might be removing a tiny bit. I put like a lot of passes on here so far and it's still just as dull as it was when I started and it doesn't look like it's removing any material and i can't really tell if the material that's actually on here is from the knife or from the sharpener itself or from the knife that i sharpened previous to it it's been like hundreds of passes at this point and uh it's still just as dull as it was when i started I actually think I might have damaged the sharpener. So I don't even know whether or not to try this one at this point. I mean, I guess we will. Why not? Oh man. That sound is horrible. So this is a 1084. This is a high carbon steel, very low carbide content. But it's relatively hard. Should be in the neighborhood of uh, 62 Rockwell. Look at that. Can we see that? Technically, Okay, technically that's shaving. So this knife had absolutely no bevel on it in the first place. This little uh, most reviewed knife sharpener on Amazon technically sharpened this knife. I don't know if you can see that bevel though. So what's the final word on the most reviewed, most popular knife sharpener on Amazon? Well, the problem here is, well, the problem here is this. First off, it makes a really, really nasty bevel. Now, the reason that most people say that this is gonna ruin your knife is simply because the only way to fix this at this point is to completely remove this secondary bevel and then we have to grind in a complete new secondary bevel, sort of like we did on this knife right here. We started from nothing and now we have a secondary bevel. The only way to fix it at this point is to take it off again and start over. So uh, 
with that being said, let me show you what we have to do at this point to fix this knife. So I actually had to remove quite a bit of steel in order to fix this. Uh, it did a lot of damage up here in uh, towards the Ricasso area, and I didn't even really fix it all the way. There's still some waviness in there, uh, but I just didn't want to remove any more material. This was after one time of using this. So you can imagine after several times how bad this would be. Um, and so on and so forth. We'd end up having like no knife left. So then what would be a good alternative to the world's most reviewed knife sharpener? Ta-da! So this is exactly what I have in my kitchen drawer to keep my cheap kitchen knives sharp. It's not a sponsor video, by the way. I paid for this with my own money, and I have several videos showing how to use it and going over its features. This is the ceramic rod version, which right now, as of this point in time, is $19.99. They also make a diamond rod version, which may or may not be more expensive depending on where you buy it and when you buy it. I would generally recommend you get the diamond rod version, but if you can't find it, this one will do just fine for basically all of your cheap kitchen knives. What are my final thoughts slash my own review on the most reviewed knife sharpener on Amazon? 